Hello ladies and gentlemen, as a guy here, I'm bringing to another video for Conqueror's Blade, published by Porous Interactive and My Games. We're coming to the end of the season, I think it is. Yeah. It's heading to the end of the season. I think it's going to be the end of the season on the first. No. It'll be on the it'll be on the Monday, so it'll be on the third. Anyway. As you could probably see, I wasn't at the top. I did go have a brief read, but we're starting from the top. Oh. Kind of expected this as well, but you know, I released, you know, they uh, had a PTR uh, two days ago on the Monday. So this is the update notice for May 30th. Update log, update notice. Anyway, the good thing is, is that I never actually got to play again, uh, play TW, so I got to see the housing map. Now I do! Too bad we don't have too many people that kind of like gets a lot of videos out, so it's pretty difficult to kind of enjoy these, um, these one offs. Eagle Fort, interesting. I think, um, when we had Dai Shen as also a map, though, that was very interesting. I never actually fought TW Dai, um, Dai Chen, but the Siege version of it was not great. It was like Eagle Fort. Eagle Fort was probably the worst. Um, or they were interesting. I know Dai Chen and Eagle Fort are similar in um, overall the design, but uh, different when it comes down to some of the nuances. That being said, I haven't played. Haojing, so I have no idea what to expect. Those of you that plays TW and has fought on the Haojing map, um, be great to know what you think about it, but at the same time, if you could give me any information about it, that'd be great. Though, I mean, I don't go digging for this information too much. <sighs> so, obviously we have the same old three hours maintenance from 12.30 to 15.30 UTC plus 8. Um, <laughs> 8,000 war coins, never heard of that. I think they meant uh, 8,000 bronze coin, 300 honor points, and fi what? 15 blacksmith orders as compensation. That is, okay, I don't know what war coins are, I don't know what blacksmith orders are, but I think this is meant to be bronze coins, and I think this is supposed to be um, experience medals. So, if it does turn out to be those new stuff, hmm, what is it going to be for? I'm not really sure what they're referring to in this scenario. Can't really think of it. Anyway, obviously you could probably see I was saying that the new map for Siege Battles will be Haojing. The brand new PvP map Haojing is now available. Haojing will enter the PV, uh, the Siege Battle matchmaking pool, and all warlords can play it by participating in the siege battle. The probability of matching the housing map will be significantly increased in the first two weeks of the housing being available. Number two, we have welfare to army, time limited free doctrine removal. So I did hear that my, my games did get a free doctrine removal, so we are apparently getting a free doctrine removal, or maybe the time frame just matches up, and they probably informed my G ahead of time. But regardless, I'm <laughs> I didn't double check the timing for my G stuff. I only really checked the news for Frontier. Hopefully that gets reconciled shortly, because you know, um, I think by the end of next week. Oh, we the Friday next week where the official handover. 7th of June. 7th of June will be the official handover, and I'm pretty sure that next week until the f um, until the 16th of June or something, um, 16th of June or something will be when the uh, when uh, Porus opens the new server. Probably be like 16 um, 16. Before, a, sec, a minute before midnight or something. But, yeah. That's happening. So, 
So, again, this is just the Doctrine Removal event, so it won't cost any Doctrine Water. I agree with a lot of people. I don't like the Doctrine Water. It's too costly to get, and again, five Doctrine Water for one epic. You can get around about 50 from the seasonal store. Not a lot. That's like 10 removals, considering that you're putting five epic doctrines on a unit every time. Um, if I do remember properly, it's like 25 uh, doctrine water to remove a legendary doctrine. Harsh, right? Um, we have the... Oh, this is for open world settlements and stuff. So the Quian's Emperor's Attire reward for Hao Jing. Um, the open world settlement, costume introduction, the throne of the emperor, and the final glory is within reach. Warlords, let us launch the final charge. To obtain the Huan Emperor's attire, you will need to occupy housing and earn the title of Hegemon, or Monarch. Requirements to unlock the title Hegemon in this season's territory war leading the alliance to occupy um angliang total the total influence of alliance reaches 8000 the warlord is the leader of the ruler in the alliance so again this is quite interesting cuz it's apparently so i mean i'm pretty sure it's always been kind of something like an alliance so one alliance the lead the, the leading alliance so leading an alliance to occupy um ang liang so doesn't matter which house in the alliance as long as you are both the leader of the house and leader of the alliance so the house has to be the so you have three houses a maximum of three houses in the alliance and one of them is going to be the leader. The leader of that particular house will be the 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 leader of the ruler in the alliance. So it's just <laughs> I know it's a bit convoluted that way, but like that's just how it is. It's like separations of uh, like di just basically like divisions. Anyway, the interesting thing here is that it is two there are two ways of getting it so not only does aliang opens and get hegemon you also can get it from the monarch title by leading an alliance to occupy hao jing and have an influence that reaches five thousand in the long ting region total influence in the long ting region that's a bit different so I think Aliang is the overall capital of the season, while Mo while Haojing will be secondary, and I think in this case Dai Shen will also be secondary. But I'm not sure if they get anything, which is really sad. Um, but mm, maybe it's also because like um, Dai Shen just like <laughs> um, yeah, like. No one likes that shit. <laughs> so again, has to be the warlord is the leader of the ruler in the alliance. So yeah, have to be the guild leader of the alliance. Guild leader that's uh, guild leader of the house that's the head of the alliance. That makes sense. All right, adjustments, optimizations, season seasonal ah uh, season settlement notice. So we have the season settlement. Dragon Rise season is coming to an end. The season settlement will take place after maintenance on June 6th. To ensure the progress of the season uh, settlement, the final territorial war that will affect the season settlement is scheduled to occur on Saturday, June 1st. Following this, on June 4th, the territorial wars will be replaced by the military exercise. Subsequently, after the conclusion of the ranked battles on June 5th, Ranked battles will no longer be accessible for the remainder of the season. The time slot designated for ranked battles will be replaced by free battles. And we head on, finally, to unit adjustments. Now, I expected this, considering the time frame that they released it on. But honestly, I don't like it. 
they had a PTR for two days. We didn't even get a second. We didn't even get a second round of testing. And I can tell you right now, ASAPs in its current form, in its form on the PTR, absolute monsters. And it doesn't even have to any. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything with its masteries either. It doesn't need its masteries in order to become monsters. The one single change that I said, and I'm pretty sure that probably someone is listening to me, and I hope they stop, because when I make these offhanded comments, doesn't mean I want you to do them. I'm just saying that I could balance these units in an absurd way. And removing the collision for allied units while activating Counter-Strike was one of the ways, but I don't want you to do that. And the fact that they don't do it for Onwatch, I don't like it. I want them to be consistent. I want them to be consistent. And I totally wanted the units from Blood of the Empires to maintain that high level of collision detection where they refuse to... To, to go inside, to phase into one another, because that's what makes them some of the best units in the game. They were OP during their seasons, and I say OP, only Asseps were OP. The Silidars were barely usable, the Spahis were overshadowed, and again, the Janissaries, basically, like, um, probably the strongest uh, range unit for muskets at the time, Everyone was using them. They had crazy accuracy at long distances and did decent damage. Not to mention, they're really, really good against even higher tier units. Did people use them a lot? No, but people do love them. They were great. And they worked great because, I don't know, they changed the targeting thing. But, like, back during Blood of the Empires, I could be at the top of, uh, what was that? Riverside Castle or Riverland Castle. And it would be like, I'd be shooting down... I'd be shooting I'd be shooting archers at the back of the enemy team from the very top of those um, base walls. Uh, just like I had full cover across that bottom section. There was no one I couldn't hit. I was sniping people from that top of the thing. I think I think some of my best I think some of my best scores were um, with Janissary using that using during that time. But again, like probably during the tier three phase. Probably once we're out of tier 3s, we just went on to Spahis and the Asaps, and it's just like, yeah, they were fun. Um, I loved using the Spahis, mainly because, like, they're not OP cavalry, but they definitely just messed up people. People would still smack the shit out of them and kill them, but, yeah. The good thing is, is that we get the Zhuang, um, the Zhuangjia Heavy Cavalry Adjustment. I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think it's enough. I think people are still going to die. Um, and that is probably what they want to avoid is completely gutting the unit. To me, completely gut the unit. You have an amazing unit. By default, people can really enjoy this um, Zhuangjia Heavy Cavalry just on the basis of how good it feels to use. Not its performance literally how good it is to use because it is an absolute monster it resets its skills its skills are on low cooldown it is fast durable and it dishes out damage like no other you remove that damage sure it's going to move fast it's going to be really easy to use you can you can v these guys you can have them follow you and they're monsters absolute monsters there is there is no reasonable way I can see the Zwanji Heavy Cavalry being meta because they can't, they shouldn't be, of because of how easy they are to use. This is like, this is like, I don't know, like a good comparison is like another unit that was super easy. Tundras. Tundras, super easy to use. Just press the cover commander button. Walk around. Everyone dies. This is like... 
like you still have to think about how to use these ones you heavy cavalry and people have been getting really good with them charge to the charge to the right come around the enemy smack them from behind you're literally seeing people drift these calves not even drift these calves they just x these calves around corners through complex obstacles and they will slaughter you and they will kill you they're lightning fast they hit hard and they still hit hard mind you they still hit hard even on the PTR with these debuffs. With these nerfs, they still hit very, very hard. Their usability is super high. People are very much more skilled with them than they were before. And I told and when I was in the PTR, I said that these cavalry are probably broken and it's just a skill issue that I had. And it does show that like even after even before the buffs, they they got nerfed by the way. They got nerfed. They got nerfed, then buffed, in the PTR. Before they were even released, they were nerfed, then buffed. That being said, um, reduce damage to heroes by 30%. Again, I don't like the fact that units have to have this in order for heroes to survive. You either have interaction with heroes or you don't. 30% damage reduction, it's okay. Swanji Heavy Cavalry do absurd amount of damage, but the units that have to face this damn thing, gonna die. Still gonna die. And you expect the heroes to get this 30% deep um 30% bonus because just like, oh, we're the heroes. We don't we shouldn't die to this unit. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you right now that like I like this change. I don't like the I don't like the I don't like the, I don't like, um, I don't like why they implemented this. I like the fact that, I like the fact that they're doing this. I don't like why they did it, though. Because, frankly, it shows that they're trying to dynamically adjust the unit to, to fit into this very tight definition of, of how strong it should be against everything else versus oh well against particular things heroes and stuff yeah you also have reduced the damage of weapon veteran by 15 percent do mind they increase the damage of weapon veteran from the original by like like 30 percent so it it like started off dealing like 1500 damage now the base was shot up the base shot up to like two and a half and now reducing it down by 30%. Now it's about two. And <laughs> um, reduce the damage of weapon veteran by 15% in low um, low speed state. It's still about 2,000 damage against eight targets. Um, that's still enough to one shot people. There's not very many units that have over 16,000 health. I mean, I can only really think about three units. Camels, Grey Hair Garrisons, Berserkers. I mean, uh, maybe Hashashans? I think they're like 18 or something. There's not that many units, honestly, that has that much health. And, come on. There is, there is so many of those units. Even if you had a unit that had 16,000 health... You're not going to survive because they're going to attack multiple times still. But I kind of understand this change. You want to make this cav have benefits at high speed, so reduce the damage at low speed. But like, you should reduce the damage of all of the damage at low speeds. And you should have added the sluggish trait. Make it difficult to get these guys running. If they get stopped, Bonus. Bonus. Because it's just... Like... You gotta add in a weakness. You can't just have... You can't just adjust the numbers and be like... Oh, they're, they're now underperforming. Oh, now they're overperforming. This is not... This is not how you design units. You don't design units to be like... Oh, statistically very strong. Or statistically very weak. You... I don't... I don't know what to say. It's just like the developers 
took too long to react. And what they have done is it looks like it's a purely statistical thing. Oh, weapon veteran damage do weapon veteran damage is way too high. We need to decrease that. Oh, but we can't decrease that to a reasonable level because it's just like uh it won't do enough damage. It won't do enough damage if we decrease it too much. Oh, because there's probably another metric where it's just like it needs to weapon where weapon veteran needs to match up against like powerful skills like dread unleashed or cavalry charges both of which are very powerful skills and the average output would i don't know like this might not be true but like the average output might be higher than each activation of weapon veteran like one charge could definitely deal more damage than weapon veteran weapon veteran does an absurd amount of damage but you know, good old winged assault charge would uh, would run through over 100 units. Weapon veteran would need those 100 units to be within five seconds of each other. The low speed one could have been interesting if they had if they had a weakness at being at low speeds. Problem is, is that they accelerate so fast. Cavalry accelerate too fast. In my eyes, cavalry accelerate too fast. They're not easily stopped and they are not easily pinned like it should be pretty easy to to stop it should be not pretty easy to stop it should be pretty hard to stop a cavalry but it should be easy to pin one because you should be able to body block it because it is a bigger more cumbersome animal and it's just like oh if you have a bunch of guys standing in front of it it the horse will need to push those guys over in order to start running and it's just like that you see it every single time cavalry are accelerating every single frame they're not even if they're not moving they're accelerating every single frame and i see this all the time they get caught on something like a fence they don't get stopped do mind they have a mechanic where if they hit an obstacle they'll take damage and they'll stop but a lot of times at certain angles you'll see them start flickering like a, they'll, you'll see them start flickering because what the server does is readjust their position in order to avoid that obstacle. Why does that happen? Because they don't want cavalry to stop where they're weak and get killed. It's mind-boggling that you, they phase through units in the first place and that they have that safety net where if they do just run into an obstacle, it's not the it's not the end of the world. It should be. Getting trapped should feel like the end of the world. But what do I know? What do I know? I mean, it must be super frustrating to use a unit that just just refuses to like go around the enemy or refute or get stuck on get stuck on every single obstacle. I loved to use my cylinders, and I hated to watch. I watch um, to walk around like fences and stuff, and see a couple of them getting stuck on one side, and it's just like, oh my goodness. Or I, or I running around um, a pole, and all of them just gets trapped, trapped in a way where they're not trying to attack the units while they're trying to walk towards me, but instead just continuously walk towards me happens it happens that being said asaps remove counter control effect and um effects immediately when activating counter strike it's a cool it's a cool recovery thing i don't like it again i don't like these kinds of things where they're just adding more effects to a very a very powerful skill anyway and i say very powerful skill the, the counter strike on the assets was one of the is is the most strong it, it is the strongest skill in this set like on, on um on watch oh man i hate saying on watch but on watch honestly is terrible it is terrible it has very high it has very high cancellation rate it doesn't follow the target properly and it class it classically just just refuses to not just knock away like how 
how the days just flicks just flicks away the target just so slightly that it starts missing is so irritating though getting hit by it is super super damning as well it's just like i've been in the middle of i've been in the middle of an asset before and it is not fun getting knocked around by those guys and do i think that they should keep that yes yes i do do I think that the um, CC is absurd and annoying? Yes, yes I do. So, again, I don't, there's a lot of things that are going to be contradictory that I say I like and I <laughs> say that I think it's good, but I don't like it, or I like it, and it's just like those kinds of things. The worst part of this next thing is the ignore collisions with allied units when activating Counter-Strike. And if anyone's watched the PTR video, I've, re I've gone through this in length, but I want to repeat it because the fact that nothing's been changed, by the way. Everything I'm telling you here about the unit adjustment hasn't changed. From the PTR that we got on the Monday, so we got the 28th, 29th, and now... On the twenty, on the thirtieth, it's being released as is. We had two days of PTR, no changes. We had luckily two days of PTR for the Rattan marksmen, but they were so goddamn broken that they were able to nerf the debuff total from being twenty-five percent to fifteen percent and ten, fifteen and ten percent. I think that I think that was a change. The ignore collision part rubs me the wrong way. Because, as I said before, one of the best qualities of Blood of the Empire units is that every single one of them, and I mean like every single one of them, there's three melee units, all of them do not, and I repeat, do not stack on themselves when you activate any of their abilities. You activate Counter-Strike. They don't stack on themselves. They're, they're trying to track the enemy. They don't stack on themselves. You activate Onwatch. They don't stack, they don't stack on themselves. They're trying to attack the enemy. There's a lot of them. That, <laughs> it's very frustrating watching 28 of your units and only maybe 5 of them touching the enemy. Charge, again, charge is universal. They'll stack on themselves. Spahis, the burst, again, is the charge, basic charge. The battle stomp, I don't think you know this, but the battle stomp has its own collision detection where the Spahis cannot stack on themselves. And it might look like they do because the horses are huge, but you look at where the riders are, and they're not touching. They're not phasing inside one another. The horse's head and the horse's butt, they're, they're phasing in one another. But the riders don't. They're not stacking so close together that they're on top of each other. Scylla does. You activate their sideways sweep. You activate their death strike. Both of them. Both of them just has the unit attacking attacking when they're in contact with the enemy. They don't run towards the enemy and then stack up on each other. They just walk towards the enemy like normal. They don't have any speed boost. They don't like, again, I don't like the fact that nearly every single uh, unit has massive gap closes or like gap closer function when they shouldn't. Reason why people are, like reason is is that like people were asking for Cilladars to have a charge. It's stupid, considering that they had two abilities, which were two of the strongest abilities in the game. Well, not two of the strongest abilities in the game. I already knew that. I already knew that Cilladars had massive damage potential with sideways sweep. They had incredible CC potential with um with death strike. You can flat. You can put an entire unit on its ass if you hit. If you hit that death strike, you seriously just needed 
that sideways sweep to come out faster because it just has tons of damage. You could drop you could drop half a unit with one swing, and they are more than likely gonna do two swings. So you could drop two whole units with sideways sweep. It was it was incredible to use the unit, and I definitely did love it during the time. But again, back in the day, like it took time to kill stuff. Like I didn't kill I didn't kill the whole unit just because I activated an ability. I actually had to get my unit in position to kill the enemy. They have massive damage potentials, but the only the limiting factor is that they have to be touching the enemy, and they can't phase through themselves to get to the enemy. So you can't I can't have the entirety of my assets in contact with the enemy without shoving them straight onto it. And even then, because of like because of how their abilities work, they'll flick they'll they'll push the enemies away from them, and they'll split up themselves. You know, I. I completely cornered a spear sergeant, and I had my unit literally surround it, and I still didn't kill it with one activation. And this is back in the day, like, spear sergeants are weak. Super weak. And I still didn't kill it with one activation. It, it required both of my abilities to still kill that spear sergeant. Did I kill it? Yeah. Did I take any losses? No. It's a very strong unit. And I mean, like, I got surprised by it. I got surprised by it several times. Someone brings it out, and it's just like, oh, I can take this unit easily. He beat the shit out of me. He beat up my um, Varangian guards. He beat up my um, random, just an absolutely random, beat up my Varangian guards. Absolutely random, beat up my Tundra humans. They can do really well. I just, I don't know why that... They don't understand that they're good units. They're still good units. They're just... They were OP for a different time. For a different game. <sighs> and I've probably complained enough. I guess you guys are only here for the update, so I'll rush through the finish. So, the asset mastery increases... Uh, for the first level, increases slashing damage by 80. Increases blocking by 80. Uh, increases slashing armor penetration by 100, increasing blocking by 80, reduce block loss in Counter-Strike, gain 20% damage reduction for 4 seconds. Still don't truly understand what this thing is. It could be two things. One is reduce block loss in Counter-Strike. The other one is gain 20% damage reduction. I'm not sure, but if it is both, it's kind of crazy because having both is ridiculous. They already have a lot top line to the point where they could essentially have what? Um, they'll have like a they'll have like a total of 57% damage reduction if it's additive. If it's if it's multiplicative, it'll be something like four. It'll be something like forty or ish. Still a lot, <laughs> still a lot, and they're not going to be easy to kill. They're not going to be easy to kill when they're in that state, and they might be an old unit, but still, fifty percent damage reduction makes them twice as hard to kill. We have reduced damage um, from polearm units by 300, increased damage to polearm units. I don't like, I don't particularly like this. Again, this is really, this seems really stupid to me. And again, we had muskets that have damage against cavalry, and then we have cavalry that has damage against range, and damage reduction against range, and it's like, why? Why is it like this? Gain one Counter Strike stamp when being attacked, but um, in Counter Strike stance up to a maximum of five stacks. When using Counter Strike, restores health equal to Counter Strike stamp stacks 300 per second for three seconds. Gain damage bonus equal to Counter Strike stamp stacks 10% for five seconds. Remove all Counter Strike stamp. This is going to be the bane of every single polearm unit because that brace formation is going to get you killed. And again, when you see that Counter Strike thing activate go defensive wait until they activate their second part you do not want to empower them and this again we're going back we're going back to that mentality um this is a really old thing if anyone actually played assets during the season one of the best strategies to dealing with assets is to not engage 
you literally had people br people right up against ASAPs, forcing their units to not attack. And once that counter strike comes down, a counter attack instantly. And I mean, like on watch and people who 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 don't go bottom line and don't use on watch, they got killed. They got slaughtered. Like I don't know what to tell you. It's just like on watch does slightly more damage, but it doesn't have the benefits of counter strike. It, like counter strike has so many benefits. First of all, it's unblockable. It has block. It has uh like. It's unblockable. It, um, sorry. It's unblockable. It, it dazes. It's it has block on it. It has block, like, it's really strong. It has a defensive and offensive capabilities plus a little bit of CC. What not to like? On watch, very strong. It's a it's a three it's a three hit combo, dealing like, I think it was like uh sixteen eighteen hundred or something, um. 16, 1800 damage or something, but it doesn't have the protections. It doesn't have, uh, it has the days. It doesn't have the block on attack thing. So you're trading off just a little bit extra damage. Well, it's roughly around about 30 ish percent, but like a little bit extra damage. And for what, <laughs> for what in the end, it's just like nothing. Um, but still, not attacking the ASAPs will again be the go to. What I wanted to say was that not attacking the ASAP, not engaging the ASAP will be the go to. You don't want to empower them, you will just have to eat the counter strike attack and then counter attack them once it's finished because that is when they're weakest. That will be the go to, that will be literally what you will need to do. And the sad thing is, is that like you can't even you can't even get ahead of them anymore. You can't hit them with a big hero skill. If you try to do anything heroes, you're going to be in a worse spot, and you're just going to die. Again, it's going to be really bad, like really, really, really bad for the game once the asset masteries come in. Um, I don't think any infantry is going to do well against them, besides. Um, Zwei handers and iron reapers with charge. You have to you have to hit the charge. That's one of the things that I think is going to be very important. Um, if you use swords as well, you're going to get ruined. I think only flail reapers are going to have any chance of beating the assaps, and I am not entirely sure if the uh, iron reapers are tanky enough to survive the sheer amount of damage. Because I used to have toe to toe fights with old iron reapers, not new iron reapers old Iron Reapers, and one unit of ASAPs would easily hand you um, the whole unit of Iron Reapers, and you'd lose, like, 10 guys, 18 guys. Um, new ones will probably slaughter you, because they'll, again, hyperstack, and if you, get eat the, if you eat the charge, you'll just pretty much half be dead. But if you can concentrate all of the 28 units of the Asseps into a small space facing off against the 18 units from the Iron Reefers, I think you got a good chance of beating the crap out of them. But that being said, um, we have Siege Battle related. Oh man, this is how they're breaking up. This hurts my heart. Posting... Um, Post battle rating features in Siege Battle. In order to better understand the preferences of our warlords regarding various maps in the Siege Battle, a rating feature will be introduced in some uh, some of the maps uh, in the Siege Battle. The rating button will be displayed on the settlement feature. Okay, interesting. Siege Battle map pool adjustment. Adjustment to the map pool in uh, Siege Battle temporarily remove the maps of... What the hell? Adjusted adjustment to the map pool in Siege Battle temporarily removed the maps of Allenberg, Quinn Ruins, Shield of the Capitals, and La Gloria Land, increasing the probability of matching with Hao Xing. So, okay, so they removed four of the maps. So there's like there's like four of the other maps. So you probably get like Water Fort, um, Water Fort, Wall Fort. Waterford, Walford, Angolia, um, 
probably more white elk for it. I think it's called something else now. I keep forgetting what the Chinese thing is. Um, man, there's probably many maps, but I probably don't remember them all. Fix bug fixes and optimization. Fix the issue of clicking on the unit mastery in the task um, taskbar did not redirect to the barracks interface. Fix the issue in the siege battle map, the Great Wall, where players were unable to construct siege engines on certain accessible towers. Uh, fix the issue in Crash Frenzy, where units were unable to move within Ongolia. Whoa! Crash. Oh, okay. Oh. What? I've never had a crash. Fre I've never had a Clash Frenzy on Angolia. They did it. The Mad Lads did it. I've never. I've not played on Angolia though. I wish. Oh man, I wish I played on Angolia now. I wish I played more Crash Frenzy to get Angolia map. Um, and some barriers, gates, and walls were missing. Hmm, interesting. Fix the issue with the legendary horse attire special effects. Only the owner could see the effects under certain circumstances. That should be an option. Honestly, that should be an option to disable their effects. Some of their effects are blindingly, um, blindingly difficult to see through. The golden staff, the golden staff bullshit. I had two spears spinning on me, and it, I couldn't see shit. That wasn't fun. The uh, legendary dual blade one. I think that hurts them more because i mean the flashes of blue is actually not that terrible for my eyes the flash of yellow was very difficult for my eyes but the flash of blue you see a lot of them in quick succession it's going to start hurting but it's not that terrible compared to the compared to the golden thing that i had before um golden compared to the golden staff um uh, fix the issue where the unit color displayed as an allied unit when opening the u interface and in in the open world, that's probably that's probably changing the um, thing from. So, it's the weird thing where it's supposed to show you allied units, but it was showing you teammates units. So it was green instead of blue. So it's just like I don't know what color they're supposed to be, but the nat the normal color is supposed to be blue. So I think they're going to try to change it back to the blue. Um, it would be cooler if we could have more colors, but again, transparency is required in a video game. It just wouldn't make sense to have custom colors. I definitely love a game mode that has pure custom colors, no banners. And I say this, I mean, like, I don't play like me. I don't care if you don't play like me. I don't care if you use it or not, but I don't use flags. I don't use unit flags. If you use unit flags, good for you. I don't use unit flags because it breaks my immersion. If I can see unit flags hovering in the background behind behind boulders and stuff, I I hate it. So I turn it off. You don't have to, but I can. But you can also tell what doctrines a unit has by looking at their flag. You can tell if a unit is weak by looking at their flag or banner. But yeah. Um. Fix the issue in rank battle settlement where the display rank did not match up to the actual rank. Yes, that was a big problem. Um, not, I mean, again, it's just like the rank, even when it's bonus thing, and it would pop up what rank you were, and it's just like, what? This doesn't match up. So glad that they're reconciling that so, so that it will show you the actual rank you achieved after losing or winning so if you downgraded or you upgraded it will show you that properly fix the issue in streamer mode where player ids were still displayed in some battlefield notifications fix the issue yeah i mean if streamers want to hide the names of their um their player or other players around them yeah they have their own prerogatives um, about keeping their identity uh, safe. I do not care. I'm not that popular. And even if I was, I don't think I'd even... Uh, people would figure it out eventually. Fix the issue of missing um, kits when using the replenish all kit function uh, from the warband build interface. Wow. Under some circumstances. I don't... I think this is referring to the fact that when you replenish all kits, it will always use the bronze function instead of using 
uh, instead of using kits. So uh, maybe they forgot to add conditional clause or they didn't have it on the right level. So a new um, confirmation interface has been added to the uh, warband builds kit replenishment, allowing for a more detailed display of the amount of kit and bronze required. That's good. I did think that it was kind of stupid how it lump summed everything. Um, it should have separated the cost. Uh, well, it should come out as best as it was possibly can about the cost separations or the amount of kits from each of the unit things. Fix an issue with the hero attire tonal spirit for, um, for female characters where a gap appears in the hand model after removing the gloves. Again, reconciling the uh, models, sometimes being slightly larger, sometimes being smaller. I think they're trying, I think the general size is not homogenized in such a way that everyone's working with the same model. Maybe there's newer models, there's older models. I definitely do think that like newer model attires, um, newer models do really badly with attires. Um, the Zweihanders does this where their heads are really small, so it makes certain it makes um, it makes certain helmets work badly on them, and it just looks weird. <laughs> fix the issue. Um, fix the issue of incorrect voiceover after donating in the Fame Envoy. I'm not that I've even noticed. Fix the issue of no voiceover for the units defeated in um, Banner Guards, Berserker, Crescent Monks, and Zykelium Militia. Not that I've actually noticed. I mean, like, I don't normally um, normally pay attention to death throws. I'm just more worried about dying at that point when I lose my unit. Optimize the layout of the, uh, um, the Arabian Nights event page for better compatibility. Uh, 16 by 9 or 21 by 9. This is again widescreen aspect ra aspect ratio. I do not use a widescreen. If you do, please tell me your experience. I do not think that a widescreen is necessary. I use three screens, but I am very used to my um, normal aspect ratio. Or maybe no, I don't think I use a 16 by 9. I don't know what the normal aspect ratio is. Whatever, whatever 920 by one. Um, 1080 is or maybe that is 16 by 9 oh anyway um that is all i mean besides the whole um conqueror's report thing but again it's mostly just kind of a newsletter letter thing it doesn't introduce very many new things it just rehashes what they've done so far um again they have a special battlefield song cre um player creation so it is a montage and again if you like watching montages i'm pretty sure it'll be pretty easy to find there's not very many conqueror's blade content creators on youtube uh they do go over a couple of things if i ever do find it interesting i might if I do ever find some of the things that they say in here interesting, I might do I might do a video about it, but most of the stuff that I think are interesting are things that we guaranteed to come through. That's why I don't cover the stream and that's why sometimes I don't cover well no. I'll cover any kind of announcement that comes through the news that seems like it's going to happen and doesn't look like it's going to just be like, oh, it's a maybe. Like a lot of a while a while back ago, they had like huge, um, like they had like a huge uh, unit thing where like, oh, we had a bunch of changes that might come through. Oh, maybe it won't. Some of them sometimes they get pushed back. Sometimes, um, some most of the time they'll get pushed through as is and yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed the stream that will be all and i hope i didn't take up too much of your time the unit balances for this week are interesting uh i didn't think i'd see another day where assets are going to be used and i do like the fact that they are doing something 
it's been too long for any major changes. The Zwanzi Heavy Cavalry probably haven't been nerfed enough, in my opinion. Um, but I'm in the I I'm like at a point where it's just like just gut the unit. There are still so many units to deal with. You gut this unit. We'll gut the next unit. We'll keep gutting units until we get to a point where units are uh, are statistically are statistically compatible. You can't have units that are consist like it is not statistically compatible when you have units that are dishing out damage in a single instant of over 16,000 damage. Like, I understand that, like, you want to do a lot of damage, and I want to also point out that Asaps within, within like, one of, like, just, 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 just over one second, they can probably dish out around about 6,000 damage. It's probably even higher now after they get the 50% buff, but, like, they can dish they can dish out damage like six thousand damage um the only difficult thing here is that like only one unit at a time um and it's very 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 difficult to kind of be in contact with a lot of units all at once but yeah i don't think they're going in a very healthy direction they're removing collision and that alone already made the assets op they didn't even need the mastery to be op and that what makes me sad is because they don't even realize what changes they've done and that is going to ruin and i say ruin the assets for me i loved to use the assets now and again i used the assets halfway through last season i used them a lot in fact i tried to use the spahis as well but they were just even worse it's probably also a combination of the block increase like 160 block increase is basically like two attacks it's not a lot it's still something the block loss reduction that's going to be huge it's probably going to get to a point where only dedicated block break units are going to be able to even deal with them i mean if halberdiers cannot deal with uh, asaps then they're clearly too strong remember even if they're supposed to be good against uh even if they're supposed to be good against pole arm units halberdier sergeants and halberdiers are some of the most damaging units in the game and if anything can go through that they either have tons of armor or tons of block because those two units both actually deal a decent amount of block damage, and there's not very many units that has the armor nor the block to survive. Case in point, I've seen plenty of ISGs accidentally drop like 10 units trying to walk into a halberdier. I've seen plenty of men-at-arms eat half half of the unit they'll kill like eight or ten of them and then all of a sudden you're dropping units like flies you're losing four you're losing six you're losing another eight half of your men at arms are dead and there's still eight of them left and all of a sudden you've just traded you've traded units even though you had to jump on them even though you killed like eight of them instantly that's how powerful halberdier phalanx is and it, it is absurd it is an absurd amount of damage. But, again, I'm going to wash my hands now of that, since it will come through, and I do th hope you guys enjoy the assets. I think it's going to be a hectic time. Hero play is going to be really bad. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to be, want to be on the front line while assets are there. The days itself will be annoying. The almost impossible to kill level of damage reduction for a tier 4 unit um pretty bonkers the damage again like the damage that there's barely any damage increases okay i take that back there is a fifth there's the 50 percent damage increase but like their base damage is really high in the first place and you're gonna get wrecked but we'll see we'll see Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, enjoy the video. But on that, my name is Azakai, and have a nice day. Bye for now.